Islam is a major religion of the world. 1.6 billion people follow it. But then why do we hear so much of terrorism, so much of misogyny, so much of intolerance, the blasphemy laws, uh, the laws that want to flog adulterers, the, the laws that don't accept other cultures, don't accept other religions. Where does this come from? Is it Islam? Is it part of Islam? Is it, is it the total of Islam? Or is there a group of people who have hijacked or taken over this religion and uh, subsumed their ideas into it, passing cultural imperialism as if it were religion? If that is the case, we have to explore Islam. We have to understand the roots of it, where it started from, how it started. And we also have to go even further and see what was the nemesis of a religion that came out of the deserts of Arabia. Why was the necessity of this religion? It was a cultural construct, of course, and it was against tribalism. So when you create a religion that is supposed to ad address the ills of tribalism, what does that religion teach you? That religion teaches you individual responsibility, something that tribes did not take seriously. In a tribe, the chief is above everybody else. The chief is capable of killing other people, taking other people's wives and properties uh, without any accountability. Islam came and changed that. Islam said that every individual has to be accountable. And if you're not accountable here, then you are accountable in the hereafter. The whole idea being that you must take responsibility of what you do and what you say and how you affect other people. That's the essence of this religion. The other important part of this religion is the interaction or the direct connection with God. Islam learned from the earlier religions like Judaism and Christianity and bypassed the need or the structures of clergy. And the reason for that was that they, they had learned that the clergy ends up utilizing or manipulating people to their own end. And therefore, the reform that we saw in Christianity was so important. And many people talk about reform in Islam. But we forget that Islam is 600 years came after Christianity. So it had the hindsight of those earlier religions. So what we see in Islam is something that tells us that you create your personal interaction and identification and connection with your creator. There's no intermediary. You don't have to go to a mosque to find your God. Your God is everywhere and your God is in your heart. And that's the God that we that we actually pray to. That's the God that we seek sub, or give submission to. And once you do that, then you are you're not submitting to anybody else or any other ideology. And that frees you from the rest. So at the essence of this religion is the freedom that you get by submitting to a God that is up there, out there, not amongst you here, so that you can then restrict yourself uh, and align yourself to the higher principles uh, of what we call God. I mean, God has a uh, hundred names, attributes. What are those attributes? Those are basically values that we, as um, human beings, aspire to. Honesty, justice, mercy, equality. What are these things? These are things that we expect of other human beings to treat us with. And we want to give confidence to them that we want to treat them that way. This is why we call these attributes to God. We are basically finding in every religion a connection between the individual, individual needs, desires, wants, and his or her interaction with society. What do we give back to the society for what we ask from the society of? That is what these religions are for, and that is what Islam was for. But it was hijacked. Um, power is corrupting. And once you have a large number of followers, who are actually willing to believe whatever you tell them, that opens the door to corruption, to corruption of misuse of power. And we've seen that in Islam. We've seen that the caliphs, subsequent caliphs, they wanted to expand their territories. They wanted to raise armies and wage wars. How do you wage war? How do you send somebody to go and kill somebody else, to take somebody else's properties? Unless you have some magic bullet where you can say that convince them that this is coming from God or from your prophet or from your religion, which is not. But they needed to concoct so many things. And most of them come through what we call the Hadith. There are some true Hadith. There are Hadith that um, are beautiful and they give us good messages of the prophet and how he taught his followers. 
the beautiful messages of Islam. What are they? Honesty, justice, equality, mercy, compassion. This is what Islam teaches. These are the higher principles of Islam. But we are taught that no, you have to pray, you have to fast, you have to, those are things which are actually rituals. Why are rituals more important than the principles? Because somebody at some stage wanted to divert, wanted to convert, wanted to sub subsume people into doing something. We are going to discuss these topics in our book, Islam in the 21st Century. Thank you. Who is this Mullah of today who fills me with guilt, who drains me of confidence, who robs me of pleasure, who sends me to death? I have a brain to think. I have a heart for compassion. I have the book to read. I have science to explore. There is no compulsion in religion. There is no woman or man unequal. There is no human without dignity. I am no longer guilty. I am confident and proud. My faith is honesty. My creed is justice. My goal is equality. I am a free Muslim of today. Are you?